Okay, um, we are um, interviewing Judge Rose Aikens, and uh, she's running for election as municipal court judge. Uh, feel free to give her an introduction. You have two minutes. All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Um, I am Najat Rosakins and I'm running for position seven on the Seattle Municipal Court bench. Um, I love Seattle and I became a US citizen here, but I've seen it erode with the breakdown of collaboration across the city. And I'm running for Seattle Municipal Court to help repair this breakdown, to improve community confidence in the court and to return to an individualized approach to ju judicial decision-making. I'm running because I've spent the last 12 years working with victims of crime in Seattle and managing our community relationships with police. I'm the candidate that can make Seattle Municipal Court better. I've worked in the public sector in Seattle for my entire legal career. I've worked in the Seattle City Attorney's Office's criminal division for six years. In that role, I developed a great understanding of all types of cases that come before the court. And while working in the criminal division, I tried over 60 cases, um, but I've also resolved cases in mental health court, community court, and domestic violence court. My awareness for how criminal cases also impacts all those um, involved has further deepened since serving regularly as a pro tem judge within King County. Um, these experiences in the city attorney's office and serving as a pro tem judge have shaped my, my judicial philosophy. I understand that the court cannot solve, single-handedly solve all the problems affecting our communities, but by being innovative and willing to try meaningful alternative approaches, it can change the course of someone's life. Judges should lead with compassion, but they also have to consider the facts and pre pre consider the facts and um, the law. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, so we're gonna to move to our first prepared question, um, which you could see in the chat. And uh, Barbara, do you wanna ask this one? Um, I'm having tr a little bit of trouble with my screen. I'm on a new computer and I can't get to the chat right now. Could we pass okay. to someone else? For no this? problem. Laura, do you wanna take that first one? What are the elements of your background and experience that make you best qualified to earn our endorsement? That is a great question. As I said a little bit in my intro, I've been working for the city for the last 12 years. And I feel like my six years as a prosecutor and my six years in my current role as a precinct liaison attorney that I have basically been um, in practicing for, for this role as a Seattle Municipal Court judge. I've also been pro teming as well, but I think what really makes me or my background um, makes me best qualified for this role specifically is just, I understand criminal law. I've worked in criminal law, I've tried cases as a prosecutor, but also as a pro tem judge. So not only have I seen it from the prosecutor standpoint, I've seen it from the judicial standpoint in sense of how to really balance all those competing interests when an individual is is before you, you know, you have to make sure that the the defendant's rights, um, his constitutional rights have been have not been infringed upon, but you also have to balance some of the issues that are happening within the community. And why is this case before the court? I also, because I've had lots of experiences in um, alternative courts, I understand the importance of alternative courts and the importance of the court being able to have all the tools available to it to ensure that we're, we're dealing with individuals specifically and not just doing a broad brush, a, a broad brush, um, approach that we are really looking at the individual who, who is committing the crime. And I think I have a great understanding of all those dynamics, especially also being somewhat of a defense attorney working for the city attorney. Seconds. That's it. Thanks. Great, thank you. Um, question number two, um, I'll take this one. Um, in what ways can the courts better serve those of moderate or low financial means in civil actions? And when we say civil actions, are we speaking like infractions? Are we speaking like speeding tickets? Is that when we say civil civil actions? Is that 
the 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 universe we're speaking of yeah I, I would say so okay and um so right now there are a lot of um opportunities that the court can impose especially as it pertains to individuals of moderate or low financial means when I have pro tem in King County District Court, I have done a number of their infraction calendar. And you can, instead of imposing a, a fine, well, first you can have a, a mitigation hearing to determine whatever the mitigating factors are in regards to this specific um, case. But also once that part is complete, you can speak with the individual and find out are you working? Are you uh, trying to find work? What, what's happening? And what are, what are your financial means right now? With infraction cases specifically, a lot of them, a lot of individuals are pro se. They're not, they don't have private attorneys coming in to, to speak on their behalf. So um, things that I have imposed specifically are um, doing mitigations, imposing um, community service where people can serve at their churches or wherever, and also um, putting an option of whether or not people want to do a hybrid, maybe partial payment and, and community service. Um, but I, I think the, the main thing is just allowing allowing people the opportunity to, to complete their conditions without paying for it. Um, I think that's, you know, um, especially around infractions, they can get very costly. And looking at those cases as a judge, I see all of an individual's outstanding fines and fees. So also something I have done is take things out of collections if I am able to, and also Im impose that as a community service as well. Great, thank you. Um, third question, uh, Alice, do you wanna take that one? Yeah, sure. If presiding over a criminal docket, what role do you think judges should take and what would you take, if any, in diverting defendants to diversion programs such as drug court, mental health court, and any other diversion programs or other alternatives to incarceration? Okay. So for municipal courts specifically, we don't, you know, drug court is more of a, a felony level offense, but I can speak to um, mental health court and, and other diversions that are available in Seattle Municipal Court specifically. Um, I think with Seattle Municipal Court, we're only dealing with misdemeanor level crimes. And I, I think some people would consider all of those crimes lower level crimes. And I, I think there is a there is a variant, there is a, a, a wide spectrum of crimes within the misdemeanor land. So we have anything from a, a theft all the way up to a DUI or domestic violence assault. I do think diversion programs are very important and I think it should be assessed on, on a case by case basis. Um, I think there are some crimes that um, depending on the person's history or depending on um, maybe more so on, on someone's history, if that person would be amenable to all, um, alternatives or diversion programs. But I think that's where we should always start, um, especially for, for misdemeanor cases and municipal court cases. That's why specifically I am running for, for Seattle Municipal Court because I think I can actually um, really help that court to really be put forward more meaningful programs as it pertains to its um, diversion programs. So I think diverting defendants to programs, I think that's where we should always start. As I said before, like all the tools should always be on the table for, for all individuals or all defendants that are committing crimes. Um, but I think it's, it's, it is going to be a fact specific and whether or not an individual is is interested in going that route. Great, thank you. And we'll move to the fourth and final question. Barbara, are you yeah. available or do you, yeah. uh, maybe Laura could take Barbara, you're good. Okay, go ahead. Um, what is your position on bail reform? What factors do you or would you consider when deciding whether to impose bail and what changes would you advocate for, if any, if elected? 
Okay, and, and this is something that I have um, experienced as I've been pro teming over the last few years. Um, I think, and let me read it one more time. So the, the presumption, especially for misdemeanor crimes, is release. The presumption should be release. And then there are a bunch of court rules that one needs to, to look at to determine whether or not bail is, is appropriate. Um, so presumption is this individual likely be released. But then you have to look through the, the rules and see what other factors, again, for a specific individual has happened. So what I've looked at are um, likelihood to reappear. So does this individual have a number of failure to appears on their history? And even if they do, that, that's not where the analysis ends. But when, you, when I see that, I do have to take that into consideration that if I release this person, are they gonna come back to court? Because ultimately, um, we've all seen that criminal justice system is very slow and there are cases that drag on for, for years. And for misdemeanor level crimes, I think what we, what we need to do is address them quickly and not let them string on for, for a long periods of time. So if someone, let's say, has an extensive failure to appear history, my options that I then would look to are um, in uh, SMC, I believe they call it um, day reporting, where maybe you can check in with the court, uh, once a week, 15 seconds, just to make sure that, okay, you're still, you're still present, you're still around, you're still going to come to court just to make sure that the court has some sort of contact with someone. And I know SMC also does electronic home monitoring where the court actually pays for it. But those would be some considerations before bail. Great. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to move to uh, eboard questions. And again, these questions, um, you have a, mi a minute to answer. I'm and, sorry. Uh, yeah, you're good. You're good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. I'd like to open it up for questions, uh, e board questions. Yeah, Barbara, go ahead. Okay. Um, thank you. I'd like to uh, follow on to the question we just had, mm -hmm. um, question four, which was about bail and bail reform. I thought that your answer was really thorough and informative about how you think about bail on individual cases, but I didn't quite get a sense about what you thought about, the, the question was about bail reform. Mm -hmm. And I just wondered if you wanted to uh, make any more statements about um, what changes you might advocate for. I know that as a judge, you're not an advocate, but um, mm -hmm. The question was about bail reform, and mm -hmm. I'm interested to hear what further you might say about it. Okay. Um, I'm always trying to make sure that I don't run afoul of any judicial canons. So I, I, I will put it this way. I think Washington uh, State and um, King County especially has done a, a good job at really um, looking at bail and the considerations as to why prosecutors um, request bail. I, I think from an individual standpoint, um, I believe, give me a second. And what changes would you advocate for? Um, 15 seconds. I think Mainly, I would say that I, I think from a prosecutors, they are now a part of this discussion in regards to bail. And I think that's, that was important. I think initially it was, may have been led by, by defense and the public defenders. And I think now it's more of a conversation with, with prosecutors as well. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what I would say needed to happen and it is happening. Thank you very much. Great, right, thank you. Other questions? I can ask one. What, what do you believe the biggest challenge is currently 
at the Seattle Municipal Court and how would you work to alleviate those challenges? Oh, the biggest challenge. Oh, goodness. Where do I begin? Um, I think one of the biggest challenges right now that I'm observing, one in my current capacity as an uh, assistant city attorney and a liaison attorney um, speaking with the community. So currently I work in, in the West Precinct. So I have, you know, I go to meetings in the Chinatown International District, but I'm also in meetings in Belltown and um, the community, everyone has a different perspective on what is happening within, within the city. And I think for the Seattle Municipal Court, I think the biggest challenge right now is people don't even quite understand what they do. And I, I've realized while I've been running that educating people as to really what does Seattle Municipal Court, what do they do and what do judges do? Um, because I, I think that's really a, a gap. And I think the biggest thing right now is educating, educating the public, educating the community as to the role of the court in, in this system. Great, thank you. We've got time for maybe one more question. Barbara has her hand up and then we'll move to the closing statement. Barbara? Okay, so I, um, I'm not a lawyer. Um, our e-board has a lot of lawyers on it. So I'm gonna ask you a non legal question, but you've touched on it actually. Um, and, and be aware that it's being asked by, by uh, someone of my ilk. Um, as a, I, and I, we, so we're in the 36th district. A lot of us live very close to downtown. I, for one, I live in, uh, in uptown, you know, I can, downtown is five or six blocks away. And it's, um, it's dangerous downtown, it's a zoo. And I know that, or rather what I see is that there are so many more offensive violations going on on the street that pe people are just getting used to watching it and uh, knowing that there's just not enough police and not enough court time to take care of all. I, I myself have been assaulted in a way, it, at least three or four times in the last six weeks in ways that I couldn't, I wouldn't bother to report or wouldn't uh, clog the courts up with it. Um, that's really different than five years ago, 10 years ago. Can you say something about what the other side of that is? Um, how has that rising tide um, changed or impacted the the court and does it mean that there's less you can do less of what you know your your work is being spread out thinner or um what's the other side of what i see on the street and um i apologize if this is a naive or an improper question it is not naive nor improper um barbara i I work downtown. I, I walk Third and Pike and Pine often because I'm all um, always wondering what is happening there, especially with the efforts to to make sure that people can now that downtown people are coming back. Um, you know, it, it it's a number of things from a city perspective. To be honest, um, I, I think it's COVID really took a number on um, the city. To, to be frank, and uh, a, a lot of people that may have been downtown in the first place were no longer downtown and that did create a vacuum. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, uh, one of the things I advise on now is um, I advise the, the mayor's office and other city departments on, on encampments, making sure that we're following, the, following our rules and making sure we're, we're doing it properly and, and not running afoul of any case law, but Ten seconds. Within, you know, two years of COVID, there was not really any any um, interactions with encampments either. So, I, I think we're now in a place where we have to restart um, some of the things that we used to do pre-COVID that we just 
didn't have the capacity to do during COVID. Okay. And it's going to take some time to bring it back, but Thank we're you. working on it, Barbara. Thank you. I appreciate your insight and I appreciate you taking on my question. Well, for the sake of time, we're going to move to the closing statement and uh, you have one minute. Okay. Well, thank you all so much for this opportunity. Um, running for Seattle Municipal Court, this is not something I, I do lightly. Uh, I have worked for the city for 12 years. I've been pro teming for the last three years. And honestly, a few months ago, I decided to stop talking about it and be about it. I wanted to be a part of the solution. I wanted to be a part of the city as it rebuilds. And I think my, not think, I know that my, my experience, my ability to partner and collaborate with city departments, other government officials, community members, um, businesses is is what we need. I think the court for too long has been very siloed and I think minutes. we the court will will better from more collaboration and partnership with with others, especially, you know, businesses who are willing to to work with with the court to really help with with resources and funding. So uh, for all of those, I believe I am the best candidate for position seven, and I ask for your support and your vote. All right, thank you. I'm going to take us off record. Okay, we are interviewing.